locked up for 1,000 years. When Jesus comes again, the righteous will go to heaven with him to receive the reward for being faithful to God. In life and death, they wish to honor God more than themselves. They kept the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. He will give them a heavenly home where Satan cannot tempt them ever again. The wicked cannot go to heaven, and they now realize that they have lost in despair. They wonder how they could have been so blind to their selfish pride. They were willingly deceived by Satan's temptations because they refused to listen to the voice of God. Now as the, they see Jesus coming in his glory, they pray for the mountains to fall on them and are destroyed by the brightness of his coming. But Satan and his evil angels will be left here on earth after bringing 6,000 years of suffering and death to this world. They must have time to think about all the trouble they have caused. The Bible tells us that an angel will come down from heaven to lock them up for 1,000 years. This 1,000 year period is called the millennium. When the 1,000 years is, are finished, Satan will again be released for a little while to tempt the evil nations that will be raised to life. Meanwhile, the righteous will be living with Jesus in heaven. They each have been given a home in the holy city with its streets of gold and gates of pearls. The city has 12 foundations that are made with precious stones and its walls are made of clear jasper. Each child of God will be enjoying all the wonderful things that Jesus has prepared for them. A robe of righteousness has been given to each of them. Those who died as martyrs for Jesus are blessed with a red hand around the bottom of their robes so that everyone will know the sacrifice they made to honor God's holy name. Crowns of gold are put on each person's head and harps are given to each of them so that they can praise God continually. Most important, God's people get a chance to review the books to see why. Some are in heaven and others are not. They are sad because some of their loved ones are not with them, but they are so grateful that Jesus died to save them from their sins. Once this 1,000 years are over, the great judgment day must begin. Satan and his angels will be released from their earthly prison to watch as the final events unfold. Jesus and his angels, along with all the redeemed, will descend from heaven. As Christ comes down through the skies, he will call to the wicked dead and a great resurrection will take place. Billions who, who have died on earth will come out of their graves looking exactly as they did when they died. They will look very different from the righteous who were resurrected 1,000 years before. Instead of being clothed with bright robes of glory, they will appear as sick, diseased, and wounded as they did when they went to the graves. Jesus will return to the place he left 3,000 years before, and his feet touch the Mount of Olives. It will spread out like a plain. The new Jerusalem, in all its dazzling splendor, will then come down from heaven and rest on that plain, and Jesus and those who are with him will go into the city. Satan will go to gather his forces to fight one last battle against God. He knows he is beaten, but once again he hopes that he can somehow take over the world. What a mighty army he will have, whose number is as the sand of the sea. There will be mighty giants from the day before the flood, and cruel evil rulers who were more monsters than men. There will be great kings, emperors, and military generals who fought terrible battles to control the earth. Satan will consult with his angels and with the mighty earthly warriors. He will show them that they vastly outnumber the righteous ones inside the city, and together they will plot how they can take the city. Once again they are blinded by their rage, too foolish to see what can never be. They are facing the God of the universe, and soon he will end evil once and for all. First they will march up over the earth's uneven crust, now damaged by earthquakes and natural disasters. In the distance they will see the heavenly city sitting like an island, shimmering in all its glory, and they will fix their gaze on that goal. As the armies of Satan march up to surround the city, Jesus will order that the gates be closed. Above the city, the wicked will see Jesus sitting on a throne of polished gold. Around his throne are gathered the unnumbered angels and millions of people who have been redeemed. The glory of the Father surrounds them all as it floods the whole earth with his radiance. Jesus will then be crowned king, and with authority and power he will announce that the final stage of the judgment must begin. 
Daniel saw the whole thing in a vision. He says, I watched till thrones were in place, put in place, and the Ancient of Days was seated. His garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head was like pure wool. His throne was a fiery flame, its wheels a burning fire. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. A thousand thousands ministered to him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. Daniel 7, 9, 10. Then the books of heavenly records will be opened, including the book of life. Each person will stand before God to receive the reward for the life they have lived. They will see written in the books every deed that they have ever done. Jesus will look into the heart of each evil person and all will understand why they have lost the heavenly prize. Scenes from the entire plan of salvation will be shown across the sky. Everyone will see when Satan first doubted God and turned against his maker. They will see Adam's temptation and fall in the Garden of Eden and see how God patiently worked to save his people. They will see the life of Jesus, the Garden of Gethsemane, his cruel trial, and the cross of Calvary. Satan himself cannot turn from the sight. He will finally admit his mistake in rebelling against God. Satan will kneel to confess that God is merciful, fair, and right to punish the wicked for the evil things they have done. Then it will be over. There will be nothing else for God to do but to bring fire down upon all the wicked. This is the second death. Anyone not found written in the book of life will be cast into the lake of fire, and they will be burnt up, destroyed forever. Our prayer. Dear Jesus, help me to understand what I need to do to prepare for your coming. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm-hmm.